So getting to check out the real Warlords yeah. was super helpful. It gave me some good ideas for how to build the real arcade cabinet. Um, and we also got uh, to meet up with Zach Ratting off camera Zach right Ratting. after that. We need to introduce the concept of Zach Ratting because we <laughs> couldn't have done this without him. He has, a, he has the CNC machine and the knowledge to use it. Yeah, his company Build Cool Stuff. He's done all kinds of projects along these lines and his uh, input was invaluable. He gave us a lot of good tips and I decided that the best course of action was to take uh, some of the tips he gave us and make a foam core mock-up so that we could test the cabinet out. I love the idea of having a foam core mock-up because just from the electronic standpoint, it would give me a chance to lay down some of my uh, laser cuts and my controllers and just see how things feel in person. It is time to make the mock-up of the cabinet before we commit to actually cutting everything out of real wood. Uh, we're gonna be using half-inch foam core to try this out. Um, and this is mainly for the ergonomics. It's mainly just to test if it's gonna be high enough, low enough, wide enough, is the angle of the control panel at a comfortable position. So we wanna try that all out before we commit to doing it in the expensive and the time-consuming wooden version. This would be a good one. This takes up the whole thing. It'll cut fairly fast. Um, so you can see what it's like. Yeah, this is gonna be flamey. <laughs> I just got a new one more pass and we'll take it out. Um, this is a 60 watt laser, so it isn't quite powerful enough to go through a half inch foam core in one go, so I'm doing two passes. It's gonna get a little melty on the edges, uh, but for our purposes, uh, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be the right shape. All right. First cut, this is a leg, one of the support legs uh, for the cabinet. Aha, that's looking pretty good. I think we got most everything popped out okay. I think we got a little bit of cleanup with an X-Acto, but for the most part, we got through enough that it's gonna serve our purposes. So this actually turned out pretty good. Like I said, it gets a little melty on the edges, but we have the right shape and size, and that's really all that we need for this. So. Now I have a bunch of other parts to cut out, so we're gonna just kinda hunker down and do a bunch of laser cutting. All right. We successfully laser cut all the parts. Um, and this is just for one station. I decided not to do the entire table because for ergonomics, uh, I think one will be sufficient to see if it's wide enough, tall enough, et cetera. Um, and we got, we're gonna test the control layout here as well. So we have markers for the speakers, et cetera. Um, so at this point, a little hot glue and a lot of tape and we'll get this together and then Jeremy and I'll take a look. Player Sean, version. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> this is it's so cool. Lightweight and easy to transport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Um, this is how I built the first uh, pin sim. The first. And it's so helpful, isn't it? It really is. And as we've discussed, I am, uh, you know, a baby when it comes to CNC, and I'm a little nervous about that. So uh, this we did primarily for the ergonomics. Is it wide enough? Tall enough? Right. Does it the controls feel good? And it did let me test out a little bit of my uh, structural stuff. Right, like my concern was the amount of foot space, right? How much yeah. is under there? Yeah. I think this is great. It, I feel, it feels good. I mean, if you're a real big person, it might be a little tight, but still, I think it works okay. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. you're, and you're used to having a little bit of space under there at a crate cabinet, but not much. <laughs> this feels actually quite comfortable. Tentative, you know, control placement. Um, mm -hmm. We did talk about the, the speaker we might 
We had spillage concerns. Well, we got spillage concerns all over the place, right? Yeah. Um, like with the screen, with the seams, and mm -hmm. one of them is is the speaker. <laughs> so maybe yeah. maybe here, even if we put a grill over that, it's still exposed. Yeah. So maybe a smaller speaker on the front. That's what I'm thinking. We could do a smaller one and put it like center here in the front panel. Mm -hmm. That that would work. Um, the cup holder I would love to have, but that's a luxury, so that you know we can jettison that now. Uh, after we've been consulting with Zach, our CNC expert, yeah. and after that, I kind of changed up how the panel's going to work. Previously, uh, on the miniature, we had we had supports that went like this and this, mm -hmm. and and then they tied in here. But um, I think for various structural reasons, I think we're going to do these fins at all the corners, and then just have these cleats that they're going to rest on and tie into. Okay. And Zach and I feel that with three quarter inch material, this is half inch for testing, but we're gonna have three quarter inch, that's gonna be really Even sturdy. Even thicker. And so it'd be tied into the cleats and rest on this bottom lip. And that'll be enough. I think so. I mean, I think so. So it's, it's not gonna bend. I mean, it's not even that long of a piece of wood. Yeah. No um, problem. And were you talking about reinforcing these with? Yeah. The one. A the plate? one thing that I realize is uh, what you know. So like our button, for example, uh, that. I mean, that would, three quarters would take up that whole thing. Right, and as I was just explaining to you before we started shooting, I want to run LEDs through these. So yeah. all six buttons are going to be daisy chained with a cable passing through right here. Yeah, so I think, I have to think about this one a little bit, but I'm thinking the controls are mounted to a metal plate, and then there's a recess cut uh, in the in the thicker thicker panel that it's in the wood into. yeah I haven't quite figured it out and maybe okay. I have to look at some of I took a bunch of pictures at the arcade to as reference to how other cabinets were built and so that will be a good reference to kind of try to figure that but stuff that's out. one of the great things about working with a CNC machine right is it yeah. doesn't just get you these nice cuts but yeah. unlike a laser cutter you can actually bore down and control the thickness of the material exactly so we can do a second pass where we like just do a little bit and uh, and then the other advantage to doing it this way is it reduces the amount of beveling that we have to do. Because the one thing that I do realize is figuring out all the angles on this right. is a little bit of a nightmare. Right. So like even like these cleats need to actually, they're not just squares, they have to have a, a, an angle here that matches the panel. And I'm bad at math and, and figuring <laughs> that stuff out. So I'm so, all about because we got kind of one shot at this. Yeah, yeah. So doing it this way also allows us a little more slop that we can have a little more space on the sides. And then what cool. we're gonna do is we're gonna use the T slot, the rubber T slot to go along along all these the edges. T molding. Yeah. Right. So that, that's the normal stuff that goes around the edge of an arcade Tra cabinet. Traditional arcade cabinet stuff. We saw a bunch of it. Cool. It's traditional, it protects it. It keeps us from having to finish the edges, yep. and it allows us a little bit of room to goof. So tell yeah. me about this panel right here, because I've been thinking about the LEDs a lot at, at home, and I know this is yeah. what you're thinking about putting a panel in. When we were talking with Zach, we had talked about how is this going to rest on the cabinet? Is it going to have a something that connects to that lip? What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Uh, so right now what I did is I just put two more cleats in. Oh, so it has its own cleats. Yeah. Okay. And I I think that that will work okay. So I think just cleats here, mm -hmm. and we were talking about this being acrylic, and you had, you'd talked about doing some maybe edge lighting to tie in with the, the game graphics. Right, right? exactly, yeah. So yeah. that's the, gonna be the center tra transparent or translucent panel mm -hmm. of a frosted acrylic here, oh. but then the border, right, that would be, you're thinking, because at one point we were talking about doing the whole thing in MDF. Now, I'm picturing this is definitely acrylic. Okay, this is all acrylic. I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. So there, we got black around the It's not structural. The sides. It is simply there to mask the screen and, okay. and add any lights we want. So I'm thinking that can be acrylic, um, whether it's two different colors or whatever. Right. But um, what are you picturing? So you're picturing, are you picturing a panel like right here that lights up? Well, yeah, actually, yeah. I, if I can walk right over here, yeah. I can grab. So, so this is just a, a quick test panel I, I cut at home. Okay. But yeah, so this is this is the dimensions you gave me, which is 10 by three. Uh, and this would be an LED strip that sits beneath it. Okay. And shines up through oh, these shafts. Oh, that's cool. I mean, the, the goal is to have the lights grabbed by these stripes to pull them up. Right. To accentuate them and, and yeah, create yeah, an effect yeah. for each player. And there'll be explosion effects here. Cool. And it'll track 
the paddle, so the mm -hmm. player's paddle oh, can can go oh all the way around the game board <laughs> whenever they rotate, just to give it like a sci-fi aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a part of the gameplay, it just reflects what they're doing. Yes, I like that. But explosions and wind and death effects would all happen here too. Well here, you know what we could maybe do? is uh, if we use some thicker acrylic yeah. um, that was thick enough to, to set in whatever panel. Like quarter inch? Yeah, maybe quarter inch so that like maybe this much of it sits in the panel and then the rest of it is where the lights actually attach. Yep. And then we could we could definitely etch it, you know, kind of like that. Uh, I uh, think yeah. that that could work pretty good. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, my thought was we need to hide the base of it mm -hmm. beneath whatever's masking it. Right. Like, right. Because so, we don't want the play, the player to see these. These will be really bright. Yeah. So we want to somehow mask that. So all that's visible is the plastic above it. Okay. So, so that's that's something to mess with. That's so. the trick. And then of course we have to like there'll be wires coming out of both ends. Mm -hmm. So we have to allow for that. As well, I think if we just use a thick enough piece of acrylic, you know, like uh, suit. I don't have anything quite thick enough, but yeah, maybe like quarter inch. Okay, that will allow an inset and just putting the lights on, and then we won't have to worry about it. Cool. Um, that's gonna look really. I'm, cool. I'm glad that you feel that this won't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, and that and yeah, we got plenty of room because we actually have more room now because if, oh, we, if we're moving the cleats to the outside, right. we have that's plenty of room. Okay. Yeah. So, do you think do we need to go any higher, lower, wider? Um, I don't change know. Change the controls. I'm not a large man, <laughs> but when I sit here, I feel like the cabinet's pretty big. Yeah. Um, I, I would almost say surprisingly that it could actually go lower. Cool. Because I mean, the benefit of going lower is you have a better vantage on the screen. Like you can yep. see it more. Yep. And if anybody smaller than me were to play this, you're almost getting too low. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, on the other hand, a larger chair would work, but I'm kind of at normal chair height right now yeah. with my bent that's a lot. Try raising the chair because that's that's at the lowest right now. And, and and these are similar to what I plan on getting for it. So okay. they will be adjustable. I mean, that that is another solution. That okay. is another solution. I don't know what, it, we should test it with some kids, you know, some smaller people just to see how they feel on it. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe the chair is the simpler solution. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't wait to play this game. I think we're, I think we're really close. So. I can't wait yeah. to play this game. <laughs> hey, do you want to see some quick LED effects? Yes. All right. All right, cool. So this is one panel. This will be one player's LED panel. Turn, so it turns red, so this is the, the red player. Right. Oh, and nice. Then, and then it begins. And this is a, right now, everyone's paddle LED is going around the board, and then they bounce, and they come back and forth. Fantastic. And whenever red hits one of the ends, I'm just doing this random test, yeah. it'll play one of these, uh, I think this is the death animation, <laughs> or this, no, this is the coin up. Awesome. Um, so it, I have these wipe effects and these flashing. Oh, man. But I have uh, death effects and coin up and hit effects so that when their shield gets hit, it just does a little flash. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this, and this is also actually running at 16 level brightness. Uh -huh. And we'll be running it at 255 level brightness. <laughs> so it's the kind of thing where if you look at them at that level, you're it, blind. You. Yeah, it's actually okay. painful. Yeah. But this is the idea. Oh my running. God, that's gonna look amazing. I want to find a way to bring the light up even further. Yeah. And maybe even isolate it more. Like I'm doing trails, but they're still bleeding between the pixels. Right. When when there shouldn't be. Um, so I'd like more control over that. So I'm thinking maybe it'll be fun if I. Don't just etch the stripes in, but if I actually cut you know holes between them. If I were to cut holes here, and actually, I was thinking making a black and a clear that mesh together. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I mean? To actually isolate it. Okay. So I'm gonna experiment more with that. I'm also, I also wanna try actual frosted acrylic, because th this is a it, laser Yeah, that, I think that would look nicer. Yeah. Um, and anyway, I'll keep experimenting. Maybe pixels instead of stripes. Uh-huh. But, I don't know, it's a start. I it's love a start. how that looks. So having done this uh, foam core station uh, really helped us work out some of the kinks and uh, gave us the confidence that we were on the right track and uh, allowed me to go home and finish the final cut files. I like that you established a look and feel for the logos too well. That's really good looking, Sean. It gave me a chance to take see my electronics in action. I'm not 100% sold on my design at this point, but I'll make some tweaks and we'll bring those over to Zach's next time.